dear brother and sister in Christ, what a great chance to catch up with you uh, while the fasting of St. Mary is approaching. We will have a series about this particular fasting to see uh, uh, to what extent is it biblical and also we'll see the history about her fasting or the fasting that is uh, named after her name and also the history of uh, the ascending of her body or soul and body because even Catholic and Orthodox are different in this situation or in this uh, philosophy and with historically what actually happened because uh, what we hear in the churches uh, is not true whatsoever even from the Coptic Orthodox books okay that's what the point okay uh, in this episode we will cover four points offering incense which happens to all saints especially Saint Mary fasting especially for Saint Mary there is no fasting after any name of saints uh, except Saint Mary, apart from Jonah, but Jonah is a prophet in the Old Testament. But uh, anyway, I'm talking about the New Testament at this, at this stage. Praise and glorification, because hey, let's go and do glorification for the saint, but or for Saint Mary. And vows, okay, plenty of people put vows to the saints, especially Saint Mary, okay, she is the top, okay. Before I start, I would like to read this uh, verse together from the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. The Lord says, You shall have no other gods before me. What this verse actually means is, what does it mean to have no other gods before me, not instead of me? Uh, because we think when we say that the, the Israelites uh, used the to worship idols, we think that they left or they abandoned Yahweh. No, it did not ever, never. They used to worship both Yahweh and also the other gods. Because this is what happens. People now, as we mentioned in some other episodes, they say they, they go to the church, they worship Jesus. At the same time, also they glorify the saints and they worship them as well, as we will see today. So they worship before me, like in addition to me. This is what is meant. So it doesn't say you abandon one and you follow the other, but actually they do this co bad combination of uh, worship. Okay. I'll take one example from the Old Testament to, to confirm this. And he, the king of Manasseh, built altars for all the hosts of heaven were in the two courts of the house of the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 21. So Manasseh, the bad king, built altars inside the house of the Lord for the hosts of the heaven. Like they were at the time, they were worshipping sun, the sun, uh, the moon, uh, Venus, and uh, some other uh, uh, stars and uh, like that. Now we come to the four points that we'd like to talk about. Offering incense. Of course, we see all the time during the Mass, the priest goes around and offer incense in front of all the uh, pictures or icons of uh, the saints. And in particular, during this fasting that is named after St. Mary, you will see especially they do like a procession in the church. And some places even they go outside in the streets like in Upper Egypt with a huge big statue with the bishop and nowadays also they have this uh, uh, new tradition that they uh, they have like uh, some uh, pigeons uh, to fly as well and they have censor and they go like that so we'd like now to see offering incense is a tradition or a rite of what so let's go to the bible and see could be offered to anyone or only to god Let's read some of this. Okay. Uh, in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, the Lord says, And when Aaron lights the lamps at the tree, that the tree light, he shall burn incense on it. On what? Uh, uh, on the altar of incense to the Lord. A perpetual incense before the Lord. Through, uh, throughout your generation. So, 
the, or, the, the order of the Lord that Aaron will burn incense at the tree light where before the Lord so it's offered to the Lord I will I, I have just five examples of this one and he the high priest shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord there is a main singer so again the the incense is in be, on the fire before the Lord number three what I read by the way was in the book of Leviticus chapter 16 number three Second Chronicles chapter 2 Behold, I am building a temple for the name of the Lord my God to dedicate it to him to burn before him sweet incense I got here two things by the way Have you noticed, because that was like, like last episode Have you noticed I'm building a temple of the name of the Lord my God? Last episode we saw that the uh, Pope Tawadro says we give name to the altar and never been in the name of the, of the, of the Lord, by the way. This is just a, another point to the, the previous episode. So the altar should be after the name of the Lord, not the name of the saints. This is totally wrong. Plus, for today, to burn before him sweet incense. So burning incense is for the Lord, before the Lord. Uh, number four. Uh, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, could be a bit long, but uh, bear with me for a second. Please. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, you have seen all the calamity that I have brought on Jerusalem and on all cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are a desolation, and no one dwells in them because of their wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger. What action they have done to provoke the Lord to anger in that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods, whom they did not know, they nor you nor your fathers. From this point, just I wanted to confirm that incense is offered to gods whether they are good gods or false ones because the last one verse that i read the lord was provoked because his people went to offer incense before other gods so i would like to confirm that offering incense is a divine right or a worship right to be offered to god and also it provokes the lord to offer incense to some some other thing last one I get one from the New Testament uh, in the book of Revelation chapter 8 and the other the, uh, then sorry then another angel having golden censer came and stood at the altar he was given much incense that he should offer with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne which is on the throne of the Lord so just out of those five items I wanted to confirm to you that in the New Testament and the Old Testament offering incense is a divine or a worship right to be offered only to God whether he's a good God or a true God or a false God and it provokes God when you we offer incense to someone else to false gods now if you offer incense to St. Mary, you make her a god or a goddess. Don't tell me wondering here. No. God has something exclusive. This is one of them. Exclusivity to him. Offering incense is exclusive to God only. You cannot do this to anyone else whatsoever. Unless you put him at the same level of God. And of course, this will be idol worshipping. Full stop. Don't cheat yourself. Don't fool yourself. Don't listen to them. They cheat you. They deceive you second thing fasting can we fast for someone else like you said fasting for saint mary what do you mean fasting for saint mary ah yes some people say i will fast for god under no i can't say it's a fasting for god to god under saint mary no this is totally wrong can't be this way again they cheating you and we'll prove it now first of all uh, also i got now five also five examples david therefore the play did with god for the child, when he had the first child from Bathsheba, Bathsheba or Bathsheba, 
the one that actually he slept with her before he married her, you know the story. Uh, and that boy was sick. So David fasted to the Lord for the boy to recover. But he died. But my point is, I want to confirm that fasting to the Lord, not to someone else. Number two, uh, uh, this one in Second Chronicles chapter 20. And Jehoshaphat feared, he was a king and found many people coming to fight to him. And set himself to seek the Lord, good, and pro proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So they fasted to the Lord, and the Lord actually gave them uh, victory. Number three, from the book of Ezra. Then I, Ezra, proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our Lord. So he fasted before the Lord to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our positions. Number four. Now, therefore, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. I want, yes, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. Joel chapter 2 verse 12. So the Lord telling the people, come to me or turn to me with fasting. Uh, number five, make it the last one, again from the book of Daniel. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make request by prayer and supplication, yes, with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. So uh, Daniel was humbling himself before the Lord by fasting. So fasting is offered to whom? To God, not to someone else. If you offer to anyone, then you, you put this person as, you're ranking him as a God. So now we've covered two points, offering incense and fasting. It's only for God. If you, if you, if you offer them to someone else, this means you putting this person as a God. Whatever justification they try, it is a deception. They cheating you. Praise the glory. Let us do glorification to the saints. This is, again, make this person as God. Give me one psalm is a glorification like to anyone else other than God. Give me just one. Two is too much for you. We'll take a few examples here. Uh, the Lord is my strength and song. So is, the Lord is, and he has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. Exodus chapter 15. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Psalm 66. Give to the Lord, O families of the people, give to the Lord glory and strength. Psalm 96. The book of Isaiah, chapter 6. He saw a vision and he saw the cherubim and seraphim. They were calling each other, saying what? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. So if you say, I do like the angels, the angel glorifying God only. They never, glor they never glorified Moses or uh, uh, Enoch or Abraham or any of those good guys. No, it's only to God. Glory only to God. Uh, and they sang a new song. This is the book of Revelation chapter 5. Saying, you are to the Lord. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So they're glorifying whom? Lord Jesus Christ. So you cannot glorify anyone else. And if you do, you put this person as God, as a rival to God. So now we cover three, one more, vows. Many people say, I put a vow like, I, uh, uh, like a, uh, a lamb for uh, St. George or St. Mary, or I put uh, a vow to St. Mary that I'll get some candles to the church or some uh, abarca to the church like wine. Or uh, some people say, I put a vow that I'll fast one more week.
to St. Mary. Some people, the first three weeks, not only two. I know many people like that. And just they put this as a vow to St. Mary, straight away. They say, a vow to St. Mary, one extra week. They know they have two for St. Mary. And how do you notice St. Mary? We'll come to this point after the vows. Now the Lord says, speak, he, the Lord talked to, Aaron, to Moses, said, speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the children of Israel and say to them, whatever man of the house of Israel or of the strangers in Israel or Oh, sorry, who offers his sacrifice for any of his vows or for any of his free will offerings which they offer to the Lord as a burnt offering. So now we found from this that the vows are offered to the Lord. One more time, uh, that was Leviticus 22. We come now to Psalm number 50. Uh, sorry, Leviticus 23 before Psalm. Besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, besides your gifts, besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings which you give to the Lord. Uh, so the Lord was telling, if you do this, do this in addition to. This is Leviticus chapter 23. So all these, the gifts and the vows and your free will offerings are offered to the Lord. Uh, I put last one here. Offer to the God Sorry, offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Psalm 50, verse 14. So we come now to recap those ones. So now we found offering incense only to God, both Old and New Testament. Fasting only to offer to God. Praise and glorification only to God. Vows only to God. What happens during the fasting of St. Mary? Number one, they fast for her. Don't be fooled by what they tell you. I will fast to the God of God. About the, in the name. What do you mean fast to God in the name of Mary? In addition to this, which person actually you keep glorifying during the fasting? Is God or St. Mary? All St. Mary. All the Alhan St. Mary. All the sermons about St. Mary. The procession for whom? For St. Mary. That's right. You go inside the church with the, with the icon, which is an idol worship, with the incense before it, or even in Upper Egypt, they have the huge, big statue in addition to many uh, icons, and even they go through the streets with the bishop himself, and now they have those birds to fly as well, and just to offer incense and glorification only to St. Mary. And they start to even, St. Mary even appeared, which means she's confirming. So yes, confirming that you're worshiping her. Good, good guys, good guys. So don't tell me you fast to God. Now nah, you're fasting to St. Mary. So you put her as goddess. You're offering incense, incense to her. You put her as goddess. You put vows to her, same thing. You make her glorification, same thing. So what this means? You are worshiping idol. Who is this idol? St. Mary. Congratulations. Satan could cheated you guys and took now you remember the first verse and you say i worship jesus that's right but you put someone else in before him you remember the first verse don't have any other gods before me you shall not have you shall have no other gods before me you shall have no other gods before me now we put another god this this time saint mary plus the angels because you offer incense to them plus St. George, which is a fake personality, and St. Mina, and, and, and all these saints, actually, the, all these gods. So you know how many gods you've got? Plenty of gods. And even the names of your altars proves that. Your fasting proves that. Your offering incense proves that. Now I'd like to come to another one. Uh, so what happens? We finish this one. Uh, uh, there is a quick issue. I would like to quickly cover this. It is in the Arabic, but not in the English because of the language. In, uh, there is a verse, but in, uh, in English it's very, it's very clear. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. For behold, hence all generations will call me blessed. Because in Arabic it says, 
to Tawib Uni, like they will bless me, but actually will call me blessed. So I will not go into this one. But if you if you if you are concerned about this one, watch my episode in Arabic. I explain this one. Now the last thing I would like to uh, uh, to share with you is I got two short clips. Two the bo both the two very big guys now in the church, which is the Pope. The one that she won, not but uh, by the voting, but by the lot, and the one actually should have won if it, if there was no lot by the votes, okay? And you will see, unfortunately, it's very obvious, very open. They worship Saint Mary. Let's watch these two videos, short videos, and come back again. <laughs> فالعذرة جديرة بالحب وبالاحترام لأنها قدمت لله كل عجينة البشرية حسب تعبير التسبح وصارت شريكة في الخلاص لأنها قدمت لله النسوت اللي هو بدونه كيل الله يخلصنا عشان كده مش صعب ان احنا نقف ان الله يعذر خلصينا في ناس يفكروا التعبير ده مش مظبوط Did you see? The Pope himself says what? We ask your forgiveness. Or, I'll translate it like more, more accurately or more literally. Nas'al minki al ghufran We ask forgiveness from you. Very open, very clear, directly. Nas'al, we ask minki from you al ghufran forgiveness. And uh, Anbar Rafael says, It is fitting, it is right to say, Ya Adra Khalasina, Virgin Mary, save us. Sorry, sir. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, son of David. This is what the people said to Jesus Christ. Hosanna fil aali, Khalasna ibn Dawood. Only Jesus, the one who saved us. He is our savior. He is the author and the finisher of our salvation. If you say this to anyone else, you definitely worshiping idols. Whether you call him a saint or whatever, all this is deception, all this is false statement, all this is foolish statement. So don't fool yourself. You are worshiping Saint Mary, exactly like the Catholic, full stop. So the objective of my episode today is to open your eyes. You are putting another God in addition to God and you tell me, Uh, I honor her. Now, this is not true. You're worshiping her. And I don't think that this is an excuse that could be accepted, by the way. I'll give you two examples of unacceptable excuses. When Adam and Eve fell, what happened? The Lord came to Adam and told him, uh, what happened? Have you eaten? He said, uh, not me. It is the wife that you gave me, or the woman that you gave me. And it was, it was true. The woman gave him. That's right. The Lord did not argue with him. He did not, he did not tell him, ah, oh, your excuse is acceptable or not. He went to Eve. Have you eaten from the tree that I said no? Not to eat from. She said, ah, the serpent cheated me or deceived me, which is true. But has the Lord accepted the excuse? No. So what happened? He punished both of them with no argument, with no discussion. Full stop. Second one. During the... Uh, trial of Lord Jesus Christ, what happened to Pilate? He found that Jesus is innocent and he tried like, to set him free. But what happened? The pressure of people pushed him or cornered him to crucify him. So what did he do? He asked for some water. He washed your hands and he said, what? Well, I am innocent from the blood of this person. Do you think that washing his hands is justification of his wrong? doing that he instead of to stop and, and 
and judge as a ruler and apply what actually uh, has had to be uh, uh, judged or just he would be okay. In fact, Jesus, when he was talking to him, he told him, the one who delivered me to you has a greater sin, which means Pilatus or Pilate has a great sin and Jesus has a greater one. So, in other words, washing his hands will never excuse him that he didn't do his job. Bad luck for him. So, dear friend, don't tell me, because I have a friend of mine, one day he told me, ah, oh, when he told me, what did you do? I'll tell him, ah, oh, she, yeah, she is not a strange person, she is your mom. No. God is exclusive to some stuff. Yes, St. Mary did and finished her job very well. That's why we call her blessed. I wish also I finished my race and my service to the Lord well, like St. Mary. Like, to stay up to the last breath serving the Lord but however I'm quite sure the one who starts a journey with me is a guarantee that I will finish my race in his name well he called me anyway so what I would like to say today to you about regarding this don't get fooled or cheated or deceived the boy and excuse it's his mom now the Lord is unique and St. Mary like any other person finished her good job like St. Paul, like St. Peter, uh, like Jeremiah, like Isaiah, like Abraham, they finished their call well. I wish also you finish your call well. Don't deceive yourself by that. In the coming episodes, we'll continue about the history, whether actually when this fasting came in, which actually happened hundreds of years after, after uh, Jesus was uh, ascended, and was not by the apostles at all, and we'll see plenty of stuff to help you out. Before I go, I would urge you fast this year to understand more and to know the truth. Don't fast to St. Mary. It's, again, it's up to you, but I would like to say, take this season, but fast not to St. Mary, but to the Lord, and ask him, Lord, open my eyes to see. Lord, give me understanding of your word. Lord, give me to discern the right from the wrong, the uh, I'll make it better than that. The fake from the genuine. Because sometimes you see something and they think it is genuine while it's fake. You know, sometimes you get something gold and something gold depleted. But from afar you think it's both are gold, which is harder. So this is called discernment. So pray and fast to the Lord to give you the spirit of discernment. May the Lord bless you. See you again. Salam alaikum.